week of Trinity 13, Wednesday, the daily rehearsal for the resurrection. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. Psalm 3, verse 5. Dearly beloved, even though plagued and pursued, David could commend himself to the Lord and sleep in peace. He could lay down and sleep, knowing that he would awake unto the Lord who abides with his children by day and sustains them through the night. Each morning you wake from the night of sleep. This is your daily reminder and rehearsal of your arising at the resurrection of the dead. From a dead sleep, Jesus will call forth those slumbering bodies from the various grave sites in this world and, as he does, will reunite them with the souls that have been with him in paradise. These things he said, and after that Jesus said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he spoke about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. John 11, verses 11 through 14. Jesus goes to awaken Lazarus. The disciples are confused. What need is there to do that? You go to sleep and then you wake up. It happens every morning. Or, in the case of someone who is sick, a person might awaken at any time. Lazarus would wake up on his own. He didn't need Jesus to awaken him. This is the sleep that the disciples thought Jesus was talking about. But Jesus spoke of the death of Lazarus. Our Redeemer described Lazarus as being asleep. When the Lord's disciples did not comprehend what he meant, Jesus spoke bluntly. Lazarus is dead. Suddenly, everything is different. With normal sleep, Lazarus would wake himself up. Now, with the sleep of death, Lazarus is not able to waken himself. Neither Mary, nor Martha, nor anyone else is capable of wakening Lazarus. This devotion is written on Good Friday. Today is the day appointed to recall the suffering of Jesus for the remission of sins and the death of God on the cross. After redeeming the world, the lifeless body of Jesus the Christ hung on the cross. Faithful men unpinned his body from the wooden beam and post. They took his body down. They are not capable of waking Jesus, and likely had no thoughts concerning this. Rather, they carried his body to a nearby garden to let Jesus' body sleep in peace in a tomb. Jesus had died. His spirit was alive and with the Father in paradise. His body was resting in peace in the sleep that happens when the soul departs. But this separation of body and soul would not continue. A couple mornings later, Jesus would rise from the cold tomb of death. The sleep of death would give way to resurrection joy as Jesus rose from the dead, appeared to his disciples, and stood with his church. Here is our hope, dearly beloved. The disciple of Jesus is one of his followers. We follow him to the cross, and we are crucified with him. At the end of life, our bodies and souls separate. Our spirits go to be with Christ in paradise, and our bodies sleep in the graveyards of this world. Then will come the dawning of a new day. Prayer Lord, during this baptized life that you give, may the old Adam within me be drowned, and may the new man daily arise and come forth to live with you now and forever. Amen. Hymn number 592, stanzas 1 and 3. I know of a sleep in Jesus' name, a rest from all toil and sorrow. Earth folds in her arms my weary frame, and shelters it till the morrow. My soul is at home with God in heaven, her sorrows are past and over. I know of a morning bright and fair, when tidings of joy shall wake us, when songs from on high shall fill the air, and God to his glory take us. When Jesus shall bid us rise from sleep, 
how joyous that hour of waking.